Okay, so here we are. Is it 10 yet? Okay, so let's do our, um, let's just kind of like uh, be aware of coming together, being unified. And then we're going to do three ohms together. And that will solidify us no matter where we are. Okay. Oh. So here we are. So does uh, so does everyone or anyone <laughs> remember the word that we've been meditating on for the month of March? Just throw it out there, Mara. Compassion. Exactly. Did you feel more compassionate this month than you normally do, or did you just were you more aware of it, or how did it affect you? Yeah, yeah. You're asking all of us. Yes, I'm asking of you. course. Oh, me? Yeah. Well, I just, um, compassion for myself. I realized I, um, felt the need of cultivating that a bit more. Um, and, and then I, therefore I can be more compassionate to others. Yes. Um, Thank you for saying that. Cause that was one of our quotes that we had from last time too, is from Buddha. If your practice of compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. And of course, that's completely right, it's Buddha. <laughs> so remember, how, it's like, how does that work? Because, you know, we do live in not just our society, but societies all over the world. Uh, sometimes we feel like if we're hard on ourselves, we're really mean to ourselves. Somehow or another, we're going we're gonna to turn out really, really good. Good. We're just going to turn out to be a really good human by talking really bad to ourselves. <laughs> it doesn't work because then we kind of feel like, well, why aren't other people talking good to us? And then we feel like we should talk to them like we talk to ourselves bad hard <laughs> so it doesn't really work you see it's a very difficult thing this uh, word compassion because it's saboteur is punitive now the interesting thing about this word over this last month is is that we have seen these two words play out in front of us on the world stage compassion punitive it's a choice Honestly, it's not as easy as chocolate and vanilla, but it's a choice. And it's very, very important that we understand this because how we are with ourselves, we're either compassionate to ourselves or we tend to be extremely punitive to ourselves. Oh, you're so stupid. You don't even deserve to go do that. Or why did you do that now? You know, there's this terrible, terrible talk. And um, people have said to me, well, that's true you know i'm not going to talk baby talk to myself i'm not going to lie to myself would i ever encourage you to lie to yourself of course not not in a thousand years mm -mm. having compassion to yourself is not letting yourself off the hook it's not lying to yourself you see how far away we are from compassion and the word truth we actually think that truth has to do with harshness like almost meanness. This is the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Whoa. So then if I say to you like this, you might think she's not telling me everything. I just think it's interesting that we've evolved to this point where when people are smiling, we're suspicious. And where they're like this, we're like, they're telling the truth. How did that happen? I mean, it's just interesting to me the more angry a newscaster comes on and they're like this we're like that's the truth that's the truth but if they come on and they start lovingly talking to us we're like oh change the channel these people are all fluff truth has to do with taking very very difficult concepts and applying them with compassion 
we all have problems. There's lots of things that make us angry and all kinds of things. Compassion is really what we need because the more punitive we are to ourselves or to others, really what progress do we make? How many people do we have in prison? How many people does it take to go to prison for the world to turn around? Two billion at one time, a million and a half. What's the magic number that we can, we can punish enough people to where everything switches around? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we shouldn't have laws and, and people who break laws shouldn't have consequences. I'm talking about the, the desire inside of a single human being to actually harm, to actually create a sense of punishment in another person. Because when you punish another person, you're wanting them to know how bad they are how horrendous they are. Now, okay, I get that at one level, but you know, they're not gonna come out of that, not the way that, that you would want them to. And then what happens when they leave prison? They come back to society. Now, do they have a good sense of themselves? Do they have any more education than they went in? Do they feel better about other human beings? Hmm. Compassion is what transforms us. Compassion. So we have, so like, let's take a, um, let's take this kind of a, a way of looking at it. So education um, in our country, we have public schools and we have private schools. So if you don't want to go to a public school, you can go to a private school. And some are affordable, some are not, doesn't matter. You know, it's, I'm not talking about the private schools right now only talking about public schools. Now we all know that in public schools, the level of education varies from school to school due to taxes, due to income. So it's very interesting that we're compassionate to those who have a lot and punitive to those who don't. Why is it that people who are born in a very poor neighborhood are not going to receive the same education as people who are born in a really nice neighborhood? What is the reasoning behind this? How will this ever make sense? It's punitive. No, you didn't have enough money. So we're going to take this away and this away and this way. We're going to put holes in your education because your parents didn't make enough money. Do you see where I'm coming from here? We don't have to do that. We can actually provide an excellent education for every single child in this country, the exact education. And if that person doesn't want that, our country has the option of private schools and lots of mixed hybrid kinds of things. <laughs> but what I'm saying is why not have one full beautiful layer that we offer to everyone? The exact same education in all schools, all everywhere. So everybody is, is actually given a compassionate chance to move forward so that nobody feels like, yeah, I went to that bad school. So I, I can't go to college because I didn't get enough good enough education to be able to go. If everybody has this, people are going to want to actually attend school a little bit more too. When you know your school is bad, you probably don't even want to go. And it makes you have low self-esteem. I'm in a bad school. I'm in a bad neighborhood. I'm a bad person. And this is how people start their lives. Whereas people over here are like, I come from a good neighborhood. I come from where there's good things happening. And I went to a good school and I have a good education. And we're very, very happy and glad that these people have that. We just know that it's just as easy to give these persons over here the same as we gave to these people over here. We're not wanting to take from these people over here. I'm really, really glad that there are some of us that really have been treated so well. All I'm saying is, is that we're wealthy enough to spread the wealth. We live in the wealthiest country that you could ever even begin to imagine. And yet we don't have broad, beautiful, easy education for all citizens. Where is our compassion? Where is our compassion for our children? Not only our children, but for future generations, where's our compassion for our own country? We don't need to present things in a punitive way. You don't have enough money, you don't get this. You're not the right this, you don't get that. You show up and you're a different color of skin, this is the treatment you get. You get this, you get, uh-uh. You see how 
uneducated that is. <laughs> it's completely uneducated. Spirituality is education. You educate yourself on what morality actually means. Education is very, very, very important. So to learn about the virtues, to be educated in the virtues is a really big deal. To practice compassion is a really big deal. It is. It's life-changing. If you meditate on the word compassion, in other words, if you help yourself to think about it consciously every single day, your life will very much improve over the next day, the next week, the next year, the next decade. Every day, if you think about the word compassion, you allow yourself to ask yourself, is that compassionate the way I spoke to that person? Well, no, they don't, wait a minute. It's not that they don't deserve it. No, I didn't speak compassionately to them. Okay, let me understand that. What you can do is maybe, maybe the situation makes it so that you can't just go to that person. Maybe they don't want you to come to them. But you can still open your heart and send compassion to them. Or, of course, you can open your heart, say their name out loud, and say, peace, peace, peace. Instead of hurting them, and then sitting in your house and just thinking what a horrible person you are. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> what sounds like a better idea? <laughs> Putting a little bit of effort into sending that person peace or just sitting around punching your head. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, what's wrong with me? I was so wrong. So now they hurt, you hurt, everybody hurts. Now we all think we're bad. That doesn't work. We don't wanna end up in the minus. We wanna be on the road moving forward. So being educated is very compassionate, educating yourself in the power of virtuous action. It's not wimpy. It's not naive. It's not bleh. Uh -uh. It's not airy-fairy. It takes tremendous inner strength to actually be determined to keep yourself growing and opening to love. You're going to make mistakes because I certainly do. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> so I say this to you. So that's why we need to be educated in compassion. Because we're all going to make a mistake and how we treat ourselves, treat another person. And you can slap yourself silly, but you won't grow in a positive way. Not going to happen. And you won't get over it. You'll just keep repeating it. So we have to help ourselves to grow, to get beyond the self, the deep self-criticisms that we have. Because the, the deeper those criticisms go, after a while, you're going to just start to believe that it's everybody else's fault. And then you're going to start to be mad at everybody or suspicious of people going to hurt you and something like that. You see? So we have to like be very, very careful because the way that you treat yourself eventually will make you treat others that way. The more you feel like you're invisible and people don't see you, the more you'll actually teach yourself to withdraw. Isn't that interesting? Because you feel like people don't want to be around you. But it's you thinking that. Go ahead, Mara. Can, that was really profound. Uh, can you repeat what you you just said? The more that, um, what was it that you said just a sentence ago? Do you remember? I'm so sorry. I just speak, you know, and I'm like, sure. that's okay. It, it will be on the recording. I, I think it was about being invisible. The more and more you think you're invisible, that that part, yes. Okay, so then I, okay, so I can't give you the exact, but I'll tell you the concept. <laughs> <a new> one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I just speak from my heart. Um, I think it was, I know what it was. Um, the more you treat yourself with compassion, the more you'll be able to help be compassionate to other people. Yes, absolutely. And sometimes what happens is, is that the more that we do feel left out, the more that we feel invisible, 
ourself, more that we feel like people don't see me, they're not talking to me, they're ignoring me, they don't really want me here. They say they do, but they don't. Or we feel suspicious, we feel, we feel like, um, like we don't belong, even though they're inviting me. They're inviting me, but they don't really want me to be here. When you have those kinds of feelings, what happens is, is that we decide that the other people are bad. We assume, we project that how I feel about myself feeling left out, that this must be how they feel towards me. So the more I feel isolated, the more I feel like people don't get me, nobody can see my pain. We're not being, we're not helping ourselves. We pull away and we'll punish others. I have pain. I showed up and you weren't there for me. And then the other person said, but I was there for you. I said this, this, and this. No, you didn't mean it because I still have pain. You see how we prove it to ourselves? I still have pain. Therefore, you didn't hurt, help me. Oh my gosh, do you see how we get? It is nobody's responsibility to make you feel love. Nobody owes you the that to sit with you until you actually get it. That's your job is to be so familiar with love, so familiar with it, that you remember that it wells up from within. Yet your tank is totally full of love. Your heart, every time it beats, pa -pa, pa -pa, it's beating love into you. It's singing to you. It's telling you, you have relationship with everyone because what we call God lives in everyone. The yogis say, well, everybody's wanting to be loved by God. You know, oh, God loves me. You know, this God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. Does God love me? I don't know. I don't know. Because things have been really bad. I think God forgot all about me. I mean, you know, God's mad at me. I'm not, I'm not praying to God. God forgot all about me. God doesn't love me. I thought God loved me, but God doesn't really love me because I'm in debt. So God doesn't love me. Mm -mm. No. The real question here is, do you love God? Do you? Do you love God? If you do, then you love yourself. And if you do, then you love everyone else. But all we're interested in is, does God love me? Because if I didn't win the lottery, God doesn't, win, doesn't love me. If I didn't get my boyfriend, God doesn't love me. How come I'm always the one that doesn't get what I want? God doesn't love me. I'm tired. I don't, I don't even know if it's even real. <laughs> no, this is about you discovering the love within you so that you can see it in everybody else. Yep, we all have the same dose of love inside of us. It's just that we don't all know how to activate it. <laughs> we all have it we all have it so what's the point in talking about spirituality if you don't even love yourself to love yourself is not about oh i'm so groovy <laughs> that's not loving yourself oh i'm gonna buy this new outfit because i love myself that's not about love either <laughs> no it's about helping yourself to see the good see good be good do good that's what my teacher used to always say see good do good be good that is the path of love be good do good see good you could tell that to any child and they'd love to say it be good do good see good <laughs> tell that to human being to adult human beings and they're like what'd she say be good what <laughs> And so, you know, many of you have heard me say this before. It's very important for you to talk to yourself like you would talk to a child. And this is where I get into trouble because that's when people are telling me, I'm not going to talk foo-foo to myself. Well, I would hope not. You're an adult. <laughs> okay? Talking to yourself like a child means that you talk about truth. When you teach a child, you say, the right thing to do is to share. We share because that's the right thing to do, of course. 
You share with Johnny, you share with Jeannie. Yeah. Would you imagine yourself saying to your child, Johnny and Janie, they're creepy little kids. You don't have to share with them. <laughs> right? You know that's not going to happen. <laughs> but yet you say that to yourself. I should share with John and Jane. Why? They're creepy. I'm not sharing with them. What happened to all that childhood education? You didn't practice it. I didn't practice it. We didn't practice it. So if you speak to yourself like a child in, sen in the sense of the truth, to share is the truth. It's the right thing to do. To speak well to one another is the truth. It's the right thing to do. That's what I mean by talk to yourself like a child, not in some foo-foo way. Mm -mm. I mean in a really deep, beautiful, disciplined way. It's the truth. It deserves respect. Help yourself like you would help a child to learn how to share, how to let the little slights go. Otherwise, you begin the practice of retaliation and, and being revengeful. And we can practice that until we perfect it. Mm -hmm. So compassion keeps us out of the dungeons of being punitive to one another as well as to ourselves. So we all know what's going on in the world today, right? Something very, very unpleasant is happening on the other side of the world. There is a country named Ukraine who is being punished by one country, maybe more, and being shown compassion by others. I thought it was so amazingly interesting that our word was compassion and punitive. And here on the world stage, we see exactly the difference between these two words. In astrology, we have been in the age of Pisces for the last 2000 years. And over this last probably about 50 to 60 years, we have been moving into the sign of Aquarius. These big signs, they move backwards. We don't need to have a whole lesson in astrology. You can look that up for yourself. <laughs> so we are technically now in what we call the age of Aquarius, but you're still some Piscean things. So they're kind of a little mixture. It's not like, you know, there's this blending kind of thing that's going on. So in the age of Pisces, it was about how we all like, uh, we would have big groups and one person would evolve out of that group and be a leader. And that person would, would lead us places, you know, good or bad. So you see, we still have that in certain ways, but the age of Aquarius is the age of groups. There isn't like this kind of action where there's one person that, that grows out of that. The age of Aquarius is that people have to work within a group and recognize the beauty of it because it's very hard to work in groups because we feel left out. Hey, aren't you guys looking at those people over there more than you're looking at me? Oh, I just can't stand working in groups. Everybody's talking, they argue. Oh, I'd rather be at home by myself. Working in groups is horrible. It's not horrible. You're just inexperienced. I'm inexperienced. We all are. We're all just learning to work in a group. Remember, we're the United States of America. We're babies on the word unity. We're showing the entire world what babies we are in terms of unity. And I'm not using that as an insult. I mean beginners. We, are, we have the audacity to stand up and say we're the United States. We're not the United States yet, but we are working on it. <laughs> we are working on it. The whole world is working on unity. It is a tough project. And it has to have where we reduce the punitive actions with compassionate explanations. We have to be willing to sacrifice some of our selfishness. Can you believe that we have to sacrifice selfishness? We don't want to give it up. No, I want all these things for myself. I mean, we have to sacrifice our selfishness so that we can become 
more selfless. Now, selfless doesn't mean you suddenly you end up with nothing and we all end up wearing gray and, you know, we all look militaristic and we don't look any different from one another. We speak the same, we act the same. No, no, no. Unity, it means that it's made up of diversity. Every person needs to be who they are and be the best that they are, not like one another. Unity is not enmeshment. It's a separate word. Enmeshment is where everybody is forced to, to dress the same, look the same, actually have the same ideas, speak the same. That's enmeshment. We're all, they're all enmeshed or subjugated. We're in this big experiment to be free people, but to be free people means we have to be unified. Because if we fight each other all the time, we're not united and we're not as strong as we could be. And what is defeating going on in this great world, great war that's going on? Great, I didn't say good, but great, great meaning just big. Unity. The entire world right now is learning to work in a unified way. We can no longer have one person rise up and actually have the power over millions upon millions upon millions of people in a punitive way. Those days are actually over, but they're still in front of us because they're not behind us yet. We are working on that on mass. The entire planet is moving from one person becoming so powerful that they make the decisions to all of us learning to work as a unity in a, in a unified way to move forward. This takes a lot of dreaming, it takes a lot of dreaming to dream what it looks like for all of us to be individuals and working together. It means we all have to dream about how to be more peaceful with one, one another, more respectful of our differences because unity requires you to be different from me. It requires you to be more original. You more original, you more original, you more original. You have to be yourself in order to be, have a perfect sense of unity. Everybody has to show up in their fullest form. There will be no repression. Unity doesn't take subjugation or repression. It's the freedom to be completely who you are. But true freedom means that you have lessened the things that make you uh, feel dark and have dark thoughts. Freedom means you have to open your heart. You have to learn to be better in the sense of being more peaceful, being more kind, being more generous. That's what unity is made up of. You will never, ever lose your sense of self when we live in unity. It requires you to be you, not to be me, to be you. So you see, unity is tough to get at, but it's the best way to live. So we see this, and we see that the Ukrainian people understand this. And they are standing up, and they are unified. Right? And us, we're looking at this going, wow, look at that. And it draws us in because the name of our country is United. And the Ukrainian people are showing us what United means. It doesn't mean ditching half the people in your country because you disagree with them. No. It means coming together and trusting one another because you trust yourself to show up. So you do show up. It requires a tremendous amount of compassion and compassion is the ability to feel your own pain, the ability to feel other people's pain. When you have the ability to feel other people's pain, you lose all feelings of wanting to hurt them. The more sensitive that you become, the, the more you lose your desire to hurt another person. 
Now you might be thinking to yourself, I don't have any desire to hurt another person. Hmm. We're not going to test that. But sometimes we can get so angry that in that moment, you do want to hurt another person. So it's important for you to know that lingers. It's all right. It doesn't make us bad. It means we have to be aware that we have the strength to overcome. So the seed of mastery is inherent. So we all have the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the seed of being a master. A master would be somebody who has perfect love every moment of every, mo of every day. <laughs> I don't really know what that means, but <laughs> I have been in the presence of somebody who was considered to be very, very holy. And the air was charged in such a way that it's completely unforgettable. And it changed me in such a way to be in that divine presence in a way that I can never forget it. And I can never go back to being however it was that I was before. To feel love, to feel magnificent love, is life-changing. And we can do that by coming together and producing love for one another, supporting one another, having compassion for one another. If you think this is wimpy, then you haven't done the work. And that's perfectly fine. That's why I say this. If you think this is wimpiness, wimpy talk I'm saying here, you just haven't done the work yet. Once you start it, you're going to be like, oh, hell's bells, this is hard. <laughs> And you'll find yourself wanting to resist being compassionate. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, I actually have resisted compassion. Whoa, I didn't know. We have to educate ourselves, not in a punitive way and go, oh, you have been so bad. You've been so bad. Oh my God, enough is enough. <laughs> Spirituality does not require punitive measures. No. Again, in Vedanta, the yogis always say, um, it is a sin. The only sin that there really is, is to call another person a sinner. What? To call another person a sinner is a sin? Yes. You know why? Because you deny that person the education that they are divine. If you tell someone they're a sinner, they think that they're bad. And that they're really bad. They're not going to want to participate. They're going to have low self-esteem. They're going to think they're bad. And if they keep thinking they're bad, eventually they become bad. They don't have another choice. You keep telling someone they're bad. You're a sinner. You're bad. You're a sinner. You're bad. God didn't love you. Mm -mm, no, why would he love you? Mm -mm, you're bad. What do you think is going to happen to that person? And who's really bad here? You see, that kind of punitive measures does not make good. Mm -mm. Oh, we have to find our way, little by little, little by little, day by day, action by action. This is not, let's create a really big plan and we'll all stick to it and we'll be, I'll be heroes. Oh, forget the hero thing. This isn't about, what can I do to go change the world? Well, we already know the answer to that. Change yourself. Unless you want to, you know, wait for somebody else to come in and change you. Do you really want that? Of course not. <laughs> you know you want to change yourself and not into something else, but into a better version of who you are. Still you, but a better version. One where you're willing to look into yourself and grow more deeply. Protect yourself from these thoughts that make it polarizing between you and somebody else. There are some things in relationships that can't be resolved because there's one person or maybe both that say no to resolution. So you may have a relationship with someone where they say no to you and they do not want to be resolved with you. So what are you going to do with that? You're going to resolve it within yourself, of course. It was always your responsibility to resolve it within yourself. If the other person doesn't want to resolve it with you, then 
peace, peace, peace for them. And you have to let it go. And you have to resolve it within yourself. Mm -hmm. If you want them to come to you and say, oh, everything's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? That's up to them. You have enough on your plate. Your own self. <laughs> your own soul. That's a lot. That's a lot to take care of. It's a lot. We're always trying to change everybody else. Well, just if I say this, will, will it change how they see me? You think it'll change everything? Think of all the time we're planning on what to say to people so that they change their minds about us. When really, why don't you change your mind about yourself? <laughs> why don't you change how you think about yourself? Why don't you show up for yourself? Why don't you show yourself some compassion instead of being so punitive that you actually cheat yourself out of opportunities? No, I probably couldn't do that. They would never see me. Well, of course not. You're not going to try. You're not going to go out there. How could they? You have to help yourself. And don't think that that's second best. <laughs> it's a lot. Because that concept that we call God, that G-O-D thing, hello, it's right here. If you want to get to know what that means, look inside yourself. But I don't know how. Of course you do. It's just that your mind is so loud that you don't think you know how. The thing to remember is that there's times when our mind is so loud, meditation is not a word that will ever come into our mind. Huh? Your mind is so loud and it's so full of how awful you are and how bad other people treat you and all the other things that go on. And I'm not saying bad things haven't happened, but it isn't a contest on who hurts the worst. Pain still is pain regardless of whatever the circumstances are in your life. It isn't a contest of do Americans hurt as bad as Ukrainians? Pain is pain. And if you're in pain, come to your rescue. Because you're going to be in more pain waiting for somebody else who's in pain to come to your rescue when they don't even know. They don't even know how to do this. <laughs> come to your own rescue. Be there for you. Calm yourself down. Practice, practice, practice breathing. You think that, that you're like, I don't know what you think about breathing, but I'm telling you, it's a huge big deal. Remember, I tell you again and again, and I'm, I'm happy to tell you 10,000 times. <laughs> Breathing and thinking are one and the same thing. So instead of asking yourself, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Oh, I'm thinking this bad thought. Oh, I'm thinking that bad thought. That just brings more attention to the bad thoughts that you're thinking. So if you're like this, having a day where you're feeling like this, whatever the thoughts are, I don't know what they could be. They could be all kinds of things. But you know this feeling. I know you all know this feeling that I'm showing you here. If you're going through a day like that, you know what you need to do? You're going to resist it. And that's perfectly understandable. And, and it happens. It's normal. But help yourself not to resist this. Long and slow. Practice long and slow. I have actually pulled my car into a parking lot before to breathe long and slow before I got to a destination. You know why? Because I have compassion for myself. I will come to my own rescue. I teach myself to be self-sufficient. I know I have a full pantry. I know you guys all have a full pantry too, but are you interested? Are you interested in your pantry? Are you interested in going in there and finding new recipes on how to help yourself? how to nourish yourself, 
how to make yourself stronger in your mind. We all work on our bodies. Look, look at the good food I'm eating to make my body strong. Great, but that body's going to die and you're not. You're not. So what are you doing to nourish your light body, which is who you actually are? What are you doing to nourish yourself? If you're like over the top, you feel yourself really stressed with anxiety or somebody just flipped you off on the freeway, pull yourself over. <laughs> Take five minutes to go into the parking lot and breathe. And the whole time you're there, you're going to be like, oh my God, I don't have time for this. I'm going to be like, ah. you're going to be a wreck. Come on. <laughs> Come to your rescue. Come to your rescue. Don't be punitive with yourself because you'll make it, you'll be punitive with others. <laughs> and then they do it to somebody else and so on and so forth. We don't want to be part of that. So what you want to do is help yourself. What's happened in this war that we're watching is we see people being punished. For what crime? <clears throat> we don't know. We don't know what crime was actually committed to have this happen. We don't know. We don't know. because there isn't any good reason for this to happen. Which is why we don't know. Perhaps Mr. Putin will tell us something, perhaps not, but we still won't know why. Because there isn't any good reason. There is never a good reason to annihilate an entire group of individuals. We've been trying to do this for thousands of years. Various countries all over the world have tried to annihilate their enemies. Mass murder again and again and again. And for it to happen again and again and again means it doesn't work. But it lingers in the air, and we breathe that air, and we all breathe in hate. So if you don't take care of yourself, you'll get contaminated by it because it lives in the air. Hate is contagious. And if you breathe in enough of it, and you don't have a strong immune system, you don't have a strong sense of spirituality, you will get it. And you too will live with hate. So we have to help ourselves. We have to build up our spiritual immune system so that we don't succumb to the saboteurs. You are responsible for the quality of your mind. I'm not talking about mental illness. I am talking about you and me. People who have reasonable amount of men good mental health right at the moment. You are responsible for helping yourself to have peace, peace, peace. No one can bring it to you as a gift. You can't unwrap it and go, oh, thank God, drink it, and now you have it. No. You not only have to become aware of it, but you have to cultivate, on it, cultivate it, and you have to practice it every single day till the day you leave this planet. Come on. You brush your teeth every morning. I hope so anyway. <laughs> so while you're brushing your teeth, you do know that you can chant in your mind, peace, peace, peace. Mm -hmm. Instead of, oh, what do I have to do today? Now I'm looking at my phone, I'm brushing my teeth, I'm all upset, look at the weather, all oh, the traffic. Oh my God. <laughs> So when you tell me you don't have time to meditate, I don't have time for that. 
You can do it while you're brushing your teeth because you're thinking all kinds of weird thoughts there anyway. You can take those thoughts, chuck them out and replace them with a mantra. Hello. <laughs> and then when you get in your car and you're still in that mood that you were when you were brushing your teeth, uh, you don't have time to practice peace, but you have time to practice irritation. And then you take that irritation with you to work, which at some point during the day, somebody else will get that because it'll be in the air and they'll breathe you in. And now they have your irritation and they'll probably bring it back to you. <laughs> so I'm saying, be aware of this. Be aware of this. This is what we learned from COVID. Things live in the air that you can't see. And it's not just viruses that I'm talking about. Other things will make you sick. Incredible thoughts of violence and hatred live in the air. Don't trust me on this. Ponder on it. Every day, I pray to Kanesha to remove the obstacles in the air. The thoughts and the words that live in the air. Kindly remove the obstacles to the thoughts and the words that live in the air to peace, peace, peace. Because every word that you say is now out in the world, out into the air, and somebody else is going to breathe it in. We're all polluters. <laughs> and not just of the car smoke. This is a huge exhaust problem. <laughs> but if you change this by making these two parts of you work in harmony, this is unity. This doing its job, not overriding this. This doing its job, not overriding this. Working together, working together. Original strength, nobody taking from each other, knowing that they need each other. <clears throat> Look at that strong, strong unity. You must be united within yourself so that we can be united out in the world with one another. It's not easy. This is not the work for wimpies. <laughs> This is the work for people who are consciously spiritual. To help yourselves to bring more peace into your life, into the air, to cultivate a deeper sense of gratitude, because if we let go of gratitude, we will live in resentment. Remember that gratitude always diminishes resentment. We all suffer from resentment, which is just an interesting combination of being hurt and being angry from the past. And we don't, we, we don't think that we are. We're like, oh yeah, I'm over that. And then something happens and we're like, because <laughs> it's still alive and well inside of us. <laughs> you see, resentment makes us uh, forget the good. Gratitude makes us remember the good. So that's why gratitude is the antidote to resentment. Because when you're feeling resentful, you don't remember the good. All you can remember is the bad thing that happened. But when you practice gratitude, you remember the good. And it's important to actually, when you're practicing your gratitude, to be grateful for the power to overcome. When you look at your life in the past and you see yourself struggling in the past, you see how horrible it was in some sort of situation. So you remember that really well, but do you remember that you overcame it? Do you remember the things that it gave you, the gifts that it gave you, that it taught you to let go of things, that it taught you that you could persevere, that you could get through it? You didn't even know how strong you were. You had no idea. But that bad thing, it said, oh, yeah, remember, you did that. You overcame it. You went through that, but it's still part of you. All the pain that you've ever had is still part of you. So when you live in compassion, that pain that's still a part of you, 
When you see it in another person, it resonates with you because you remember you too have felt like that. And when you have compassion, you recognize that pain that's in a person, even though their circumstances are radically different than what yours are, you remember this feeling of pain. And when you remember that feeling of pain and you've been practicing compassion, you won't contribute to that pain. You'll be more consciously aware that they need understanding, regardless if they are, have been your enemy or not. That's how strong compassion is. It can override racism, bigotry. In the moment of compassion, you don't care what color a person is. You don't care what status they are in the world. You will reach out and help them. That is so strong. That is so beautiful. Those are the people that we remember. The ones that when they looked at you when you were in pain and they saw themselves and they hurt, they helped you because they know what you were feeling. Yeah, that's humanity. That's compassion. So I know people get tired of hearing that saying, our thoughts and prayers are with you. And they go, oh, just send action. It's not either or. What the heck is that all about? <laughs> you could either pray or you could do action. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why not do both? <laughs> or a little of this and a lot of that. I don't care. But there's no reason to tell people that it doesn't make any difference. The only reason that happens is because that's how bad we've become. And I don't mean bad and like, we're so bad. I mean bad, like ill. That we think we're so weak that our thoughts don't matter. What in the world has happened? Everything you think matters. If I think every single day that I've got to get that country back, do you know what I'm talking about? Eventually, I'm going to reach out and try to get that country back. You know who I'm talking about? How does this happen to one person? So let me just say this one thing to you. You know how uh, uh, people talk about manifestation, and you know, really learning how to bring things to you and all of this and the power of the mind and you can do it. You get it from me. You get it from lots of people. You can do it. The power of the mind we can overcome, right? That one soul, that one soul that is causing so much pain in the world today, cultivated a tremendous amount of personal power. Mm -hmm. Those thoughts of Mr. Putin's have been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. And he has cultivated such deep concentration on one type of thought that now he has this much power over all of us. One person. Because inside of each human being, all of us could become as powerful as him, but filled with love. He is an example on the bad side of what we're talking about every day. Spirituality, manifestation, mastery, growing, empowerment, feeling what's inside, concentration. He did everything with very bad intentions. So when you do all of this with very good intentions, you become the reverse of him. Remember that. He is a very bad example, but an example of how powerful each human being has the capacity to become. 
You have that capacity. I have it. Everyone has it. You see how important it is that we move from one person emerging out of the group to everybody being at their very best. Understanding that this power that made this particular person today lives in all of us in the opposite form, as well as the form that he's showing. Yeah, you have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to cultivate that power properly, effectively, to be resilient, to let go of the tiniest little slights. Don't carry them into the next day, into the next week, into the next month. Develop awareness of your own inner strength, the power to overcome, to let go, to move forward. These are the things that we want to really, really ponder on. And we're going to continue this into the next month, our word for the next month. Let's see, April, May, April. <laughs> the word for April is actually the word transformation. Now, transformation in and of itself is not a virtuous quality. It is the result of the practice of virtues. So the more that we practice the virtues, you will transform. Now, the um, saboteur of transformation is stagnation. When we start to feel stagnant, we start to lose faith in ourselves. We stop helping ourselves. We start to become dull. We don't even know what to do. You have to help yourself to regain your ability to love. Remember, everybody wants to be loved by God. But do you love God? Do you love you? So I know it sounds weird. I do send peace every single day to Ukraine and to all countries. And I even send it to Mr. Putin because if he doesn't have peace, he'll get worse. So um, if you have questions, I invite you to please stay, <laughs> please stay. If you need to go on, please do so. Know that I'm really happy that you were here today. I'm sure everybody else is happy that you were here today too, because we need all of us to be here, really, because this is the best thing is to practice peace, peace, peace with one another, right? That's what it's all about. And I hope our coming together makes you feel stronger because uh, it makes me feel stronger, that's for sure. And I personally am quite grateful to you, really, very, very much. So I'm inviting you to stay. But for those who need to move on to um, other humans <laughs> right now, <laughs> kindly do so. <laughs> and um, let us do three ohms together, okay? be with you. Namaste. Please stay if you like. Hmm? Still good. Still good. <laughs> Does anybody have a question? No. I'm sorry? Mara. Oh, Mara? Um, yes. Um, with the... Um, a little bit aside was well it's within the uh you know our virtues uh is um when one is hung up on procrastination is the saboteur of perfectionism procrastination. it's a result of perfectionism right 
So is there a, with a practice around letting go of procrastination, is there a virtue that would be a good one for that? Absolutely. Um, it is acceptance. Okay. So it, acceptance, procrastination, then those are the virtue. Well, yeah, see, acceptance has, well, there could be other saboteurs, but in this case, what you were saying, because you used the, um, uh, the example of perfectionism, mm -hmm. perfectionism um, actually results in procrastination because when we're when we're being a perfectionist, we can we just keep doing it again and again and again because we we can't get satisfied and we're like just one more, it's just not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough, and so um, we have to practice acceptance so that we're able to go okay, this is the best that it can be in this setting. Mm -hmm. And the other thing though, it's not just about the outer. The thing about see procrastination is when we get hooked, uh, we get uh, caught up in how things look on the outside. Mm -hmm. You know, the procrastination makes us push away because we don't want to fail and it might not be perfect. So we push things away mm -hmm. yeah. and then they linger with us and linger with us. So if we could accept that we are at our best and that we are learning, see, it's like we're, we try to make ourselves be a master all the time. Well, it's not as good as the master did it. Well, Right. The master did it 10,000 times more and longer than you did. <laughs> yeah. So when we accept that we're, um, we're in that place, then we, uh, we accept where we are, that this is perfect today. And as I continue on perfection or what's perfect is different than what it is today. Do you do, do Does that make sense? Yes. Right. So acceptance is a virtue. Yes. yes. And then that feeds into peace um finding peace within oneself to accept oneself uh, yes and then that being bringing up a level of peace we can contribute in that way exactly uh, yeah. because with perfectionism it also brings in how we feel that other people see us mm -hmm. i want it to be perfect so that when somebody sees this they see that i did a really great job mm -hmm. i don't want people to talk bad about me I don't want to talk bad about me and I don't want other people to say, oh, that's not really perfect. Mm -hmm. So that all of that fear of failure, fear of what other people are going to think, fear of what we're going to think, mm -hmm. <laughs> fear of judgment, fear of criticism. That's mm -hmm. what makes us procrastinate on doing our best because we're overly concerned about how other people will judge us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And then that relates very much to then for April transformation. Um, right. Right. Yeah. That yeah, because yeah, yeah, because procrastination is stagnation because mm -hmm. you don't do <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So right. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Absolutely. Let's see that. I have Renee. a question. Oh wait. Oh no. Go ahead. Here, I'll be right back. Yeah. No problem. Renee. Hello. Hi. Hi, dear. There you are. <laughs> How are you? I'm yeah. well. How are you? I am good. Thank you. So I'm um, sorry. I need to unmute. Um, start the video so i was just heard your discussion about the procrastination because i have this problem been bothering me being like last few weeks that i just don't know how i should i need some advices to tell me how i should you know take care of that so i've been going into car accident like in december and then um it's right before my final week and then the school have granted me the extension to my assignment and then until March. And then until March, I told, oh, I would give you the, the thing on this date. Tell my, I told my professor, okay, I would turn in my paper on this date, like on March 8th. And I still couldn't do it until now. Okay, who doesn't, who's never had this experience? <laughs> Anyone? Oh, never had? Never had it. Who's never had it? Ruby? That happened to me all the time in college. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, I just want you to know you're an excellent company, first of all, dear. Okay? <laughs> you, we, we all have compassion for you because we have all had that pain. We have. So, again, it's lack of faith in the self. You know? And it's very hard for us to do things in increments. We have this tendency to want to do all or nothing. So it's very hard for us if we feel pressured. It's very hard for us because we're like, oh my God, I only have this much time to do it. And I don't want to do it because I have so many other things that I have to do. We all know how this works. So let's just go back to the word, Renee. What is our, our word that we've been working on, which is compassion. 
And compassion can really help with procrastination because when you have compassion for yourself, you're not going to be so involved with perfectionism. Uh-uh, it won't be because okay. compassion doesn't require perfectionism. It requires you to be more understanding of yourself. Uh, it's a weird thing. I, I do get it. I, I know this example you gave was so beautiful. <laughs> it, it, it's one that everybody can totally relate to. And th this is what happens in the mind. The mind starts saying, well, I really can't do it because I have this going on. And, and then the next day you have, I can't do it because I have this going on and this going on. Oh, and then the phone rang and I have that too. <sighs> People have no idea how much I have going on. Holy cow. Now we have this many excuses already lined up. And we've put a lot of energy into helping ourselves to understand it's never going to get done. Yeah, exactly. I don't have this, right? Because I know how this works too. <laughs> so then we make it so we can't do it because we've already got and we don't think of them excuses we're like no this is really what's happening i am so overwhelmed and nobody can see it and just yeah want someone to see us so you have to see yourself we wait for someone else to see us and say oh my god you're so you've got so much going on of course you can't do that of course you can't right that's and, what i want that's what you want and i feel so embarrassed to of course you do. We all do. I, I feel embarrassed why my professor letter to let him know because I, I just I I'm not a person that you know turning the things you know over the deadline and then no reasons, not saying anything, you know, it's just kind like of perfection. Perfectionism is working here on oh, me really well. Works. It never <laughs> works because it doesn't exist. If perfection actually existed, that means we could achieve something and it never would have to be improved again. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. It doesn't exist. It's, it's, it's this illusion that we chase after. Oh, well, look how perfect it is. And then you do it again. And, oh, it's even a little bit better. It's even more perfect than it was before. You see, there's, there's no sense. Of, there's no actually reaching a, a particular level and then never doing it any better than you did it before. So I'm just going to say to you, practice some compassion, Renee, and um, you have my compassion. Mm, that's much better. Yeah, and you will feel a lot better when it's done. It's true, but we ought to get that there. <laughs> Deborah? Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could delineate or make any between um, compassion and mercy. Mm. So mercy, mercy and compassion are very, very similar. You know, compassion is one of these things that, as, as you know, because I know you love words. So of course, we know that the word passion, you know, is uh, inherent in the word compassion. So compassion means with passion, right? And passion, as some of you know, means to suffer. What? <laughs> the passion of Christ. <laughs> yeah originally it meant to suffer so compassion means with suffering mercy we have is very close to the word mercenary isn't it oh i never thought of that <laughs> yes yeah a mercenary mm. it means they have no mercy they don't think yeah. mercy is a way of thinking too mercy mercy is a way where you're in there where you know and when you see someone that's actually harmed, it's, it's uh, to bring up mercy. Mercy is the like anti-violence, a merc mercenary, um, excuse me, how do I say that? Mercenarian. <laughs> they, uh, they don't have a conscience. Right. All they know is they're going to get paid for this bad thing. Mm -hmm. And um, mercy is your conscience. You know, so they're really in there the same. There's just a little bit of a different flavor. Right. Because I, I, I was thinking of uh, Les Miserables because he had compassion for Jean Paul Jean and he showed him mercy. Yeah. Showed him his conscience. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yes, I love. Yeah. And oh, I, and I, other, I, I did it here for conscience when really conscience lives here. This right. is your conscience. So God he opened conscience. that. Yes. Yeah. And then there's the transformation. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. this is where mercy lives, like our sisters of mercy. Yes. 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 Yeah. Great. And, and then the other thing I just wanted to share with you, because <clears throat> sin has become such a pejorative term in the past 2000 years, meaning equaling bad. But in the Greek and as well as in the Hebrew, the word is armatia. And it means, um, no, excuse me. Yeah, that's right. And it, it means literally quit missing the mark. And, the, and it's for a picture of an arrow, you know, an arrow on a target. So you're missing the mark. So even when Christ said to the woman, go thy way and sin no more, he's actually saying, go thy way and quit missing the mark. Quit missing the mark. Yeah. So I love, we... I love to share that because <clears throat> it's just that, we're, we're, you know, we got off the path a little bit. Come back to it. Yeah, absolutely. Hit the mark. And how do we learn to hit the mark? Practice. Practice, 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 pack, practice makes us a good marksman, markswoman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, I wanted to share that because it for me, once I found that it certainly took the sting out of the word sin. Yeah, I'm glad that you That's shared. All. It's a beautiful thing. Sin, like in Spanish, huh? Without. Sin. Like yeah. with, without love. <laughs> sin without love. <laughs> yeah, seen. What? Senzo. There you go. Oh, I love how everybody loves words, languages. <laughs> it's a good group that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, and thank you, Deborah, because uh, I think if we were taught that as little, well, I'm speaking being one of uh, several Renity Gay Catholics I know. Uh, if we were taught that, we would uh, move forward with much less guilt and shame in our lives, right? Absolutely. It's like sin is bad. No sin means do do better next time. Yeah, absolutely. You know? uh, yeah. Just so you know, uh, Catholics tell me that that they were raised with this uh, this situation of guilt. Um, Jewish people tell me this, and Hindu people tell me this too. So just so you know. <laughs> Catholics don't have the market on that one. Ordered, yeah. It right, seems yeah. to be a worldwide problem. <laughs> yeah. And then also with shame too, it's, it's, it, I, I read one definition or heard it and it was so good. It was just, it's, it's a secret we don't want anybody to know about. Yeah. That's so all just, it is. So we just apply it on everybody else. Let me just shame you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just expose your secret and shame you. <laughs> So, anybody else have questions? Okay. Well, I just want to say that um, I am so happy that we get to do this together and we get to talk together and practice together. And I always look forward to um, to our first Sundays and talking about. It. I just thought that it was just such a. I just was like, oh my gosh, here is our word of the month unfolding right in front of us, you know compassion and punitive there it was right there every day showing us somebody who constantly was punishing people and at the same time people who were wanting to liberate others through compassion 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 i thought this is really remarkable for us to be able to um, unfortunately see that but fortunately in the sense of that it awakens us to send more love and help us to raise ourselves up. Because every time we raise ourselves up, we clean the air up. Cleaning the air up, we have better for everybody to breathe in these virtues and to become better and stronger. It will happen. Maybe not in, in, in our lifetime, but we will be the ones that plant these little seeds, you know, and those that come after us, which could be ourselves, actually, isn't that interesting? <laughs> come back and plow those fields. So, you know, over this next 2000 years, it'll be completely different than the last 2000 years. But where we are right now with it is that this is a tipping point and we all must join in with prayers for peace, peace, peace. So thank you so much. Thank peace. you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's Ruby. Hi, Ruby. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Thank you. everyone. Bye. Peace, you guys. Peace. Bye. Peace. 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 Peace.